Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to the Molecular Background of Hematology chapter of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine Board Review Made Simple. Basic Review DNA is composed of a double helix of nucleotides, purines, which are adenine and guanosine, and pyrimidines, which are thiamine and cytosine. Each nucleotide consists of base attached to deoxyribose sugar. The double helix is formed as nucleotides link through phosphodiester bonds between the 5' position of the deoxyribose of one nucleotide and the 3' position of the deoxyribose of the adjacent nucleotide, hydrogen bonds forming between the pyrimidine purine nucleotide. A binds to T and G binds to C. The DNA strands are complementary and in an anti parallel manner. The 5' end of one joins with the 3' end of the other. Genes are the functional genetic unit which encode for proteins. The exons are the coding sequences within the gene, and the introns are the non coding sequences which are spliced out. <clears throat> Chromosomes or genes are arranged in linear fashion. Chromatin it's a complex of DNA in each chromosome wrapped around the histone to condense it further and protect her from constant replication. Very important, histone deacetylation and methylation keep the DNA wrapped tightly around the histones so that the genetic material cannot be expressed, therefore proteins cannot be made. DNA methylation is referred to as epigenetic control of gene expression in which genes are silenced from expression. Histone deacetylation inhibitors, known as HIDAC inhibitors, reverse this mechanism and allow for gene expression. DNA demethylating agents demethylate the methyl groups on cytosine, which are keeping the gene silent and allow for gene expression, which results in stem cell maturation in the case of myeloid dysplastic syndrome. Transcription. DNA is unwound and RNA polymerase transcribes the DNA into pre-messenger RNA. The introns are removed by splicing, then you develop messenger RNA, mRNA. Splicing of the pre-messenger RNA may vary slightly. This will result in different proteins being produced from the same gene. If a mutation occurs in DNA nucleotides, it may result in either one, a nonsense mutation, and I suggest you must know all these three very well. A nonsense mutation is a premature termination of translation, which occurs, for instance, in beta zero thalassemia. The mutation occurs in the exon, which results in premature termination and no beta hemoglobin chain being produced. Or it may result in a missense mutation, a point mutation in which a single nucleotide is changed, resulting in a codon that codes for a different amino acid, for instance, sickle cell disease. And last, a frame shift mutation, a genetic muta mutation caused by indels, insertion or deletions of a number of nucleotides. Due to the triple nature of gene expression by codons, the insertion or deletion can change the reading frame, the grouping of codons, resulting in a completely different translation from the original, for instance, the JAK2 activation in P. vera. And how does DNA control gene expression? Promoter regions outside of the nucleotide encoding sequence, either proximal or distal to the sequence, control when and how often the RNA polymerase may bind and initiate transcription of DNA so the proteins may be synthesized. The promoters may either decrease RNA polymerase binding called silencers or increase RNA polymerase binding called enhancers. Locus control region, LCR, is an example of an enhancer of DNA replication. To make it very simple, special proteins, called leucine zippers as an example, bind to the promoter region, LCR as an example, and unwind the DNA double helix, promote RNA polymerase to bind to the DNA, and initiate transcription of DNA into pre-messenger RNA. The mRNA is traveled to the ribosome, in which the mRNA sequence is decoded, and proteins are synthesized via tRNA amino acid anticodon sequence, pairing with the respective mRNA triple codon, that's translation. Then that protein is taken and folded into its tertiary structure. <clears throat> Small interfering RNA, siRNA, recently discovered and frequently asked, so you must know siRNAs. Important because this is a newly discovered mechanism of controlling gene expression.
siRNAs are short sequences of the genomic sequence that are spliced up from the pre-messenger RNA by enzymes called dicer androtia. So for instance, the introns that are spliced out actually can end up becoming the siRNA. siRNA is a short 20 nucleotide RNA that regulates genes by incorporating into mRNA and silencing translation. This is referred to as post transcriptional gene silencing. Deletion or amplification of microRNAs has been predicted to promote cancer by interfering with regulation of cell proliferation and apoptosis, called RNA interference pathway. An example, sickle cell patients have been infected with viral vectors that produce siRNAs against a sickle globin gene, and in those patients, the sickle beta globin production has been decreased. A single nucleotide polymorphism called SNPs. DNA sequence variation occurs when a single nucleotide, either the A, T, C, or G, in the genome or other shared sequences differs between members of the biologic species or paired chromosomes in an individual. Due to redundancy of the genetic code, a single nucleotide mutation may not even change the amino acid sequence being translated, but will identify the allele as unique. An example, different SNPs which exist in different forms of sickle cell disease, for instance, Central Republic African type versus the Benegal. These SNPs may be identified with RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism. And what is RFLP? RFLP refers to difference between samples of homologous DNA molecules that come from different locations of restrictive enzyme sites. The basic technique for detecting RFLPs involves fragmenting a sample of DNA by a restriction enzyme, which can recognize and cut DNA wherever a specific short sequence occurs in a process known as restriction digest. The resulting DNA fragments are then separated by length through a process known as agrostellar diaphoresis and transferred to a membrane via the southern block procedure. Hybridization of the membrane to a labeled DNA probe determines the length of the fragments, which are complementary to a probe. Then RFLP occurs when the length of a detected fragment varies between individuals. RFLPs detect constitutional inherited variations or polymorphisms in DNA that create or abolish restriction enzyme sites. So for instance, the potential works question, if researchers were attempting to initially determine the chromosomal location of a particular disease gene, they would analyze the DNA of the family members afflicted by the disease and look for the RFLP allele that show a similar pattern of inheritance as that of the disease. Most RFLPs are in the non-coding region of the genes, the introns, as innocent bystanders that are inherited with disease-causing mutations. An exception is the factor of hybridin in sickle cell disease in which the RFLP is actually in the exon region of the relevant gene. Hybridization techniques. There's three techniques that you need to know. One is sudden blotting, in which the DNA is digested by restriction enzymes and a specific sequence is identified using fluorescent complementary probes. RFLPs, for instance, use southern blot techniques. Next is the northern blotting technique, in which the RNA is digested by restriction enzymes and a specific sequence is identified using fluorescent complementary probes, and then the western blotting technique in which proteins are detected by a specific antibody directed against the protein. Cytogenetics. Conventional cytogenetics detect either numeric chromosomal abnormalities, large deletions, or translocation of chromosomal fragments, for instance, translocation 922 in CML. These cells must be undergoing mitosis, and again, please remember this. The cells must be undergoing mitosis in order to appreciate the chromosomes under the light microscope. The cells are placed in culture media to grow and then are rested in metaphase. So the biggest take home, if the cells do not grow in culture media or the mutation is submicroscopic, conventional cell genetics will not be helpful. That is why this is very difficult in myeloma since plasma cells do not grow very well in media. If Conventional cytogenetics are not helpful, then you must test via FISH or PCR. What is FISH? Fluorescent in situ hybridization. Case report. 65-year-old female with elevated WBC count, bone marrow revealing 65% blast, and flow consistent with M2 leukemia. 
but bone marrow cytogenetics demonstrates normal female XX carry type in 100 of 100 cells. So how would you detect the translocation 821? Remember, conventional cytogenetics has limitations including sensitivity, the requirements for dividing cells, and the inability to detect microdeletions. For microdeletions, you need to use much more sensitive methods such as P PCR or FISH. FISH is a cytogenetic technique used to detect and localize the presence or absence of a specific DNA sequence on chromosomes. It uses fluorescent probes that bind to only the regions of chromosomes with which they show a high degree of sequence similarity. Fluorescent microscopy may be used to discover where the fluorescent probe is bound to the chromosome. Major advantage over conventional cytogenetics is one, may analyze non-dividing cells, so no need to grow in their culture. Two, it's a much more sensitive technique. DNA microarrays. DNA microarrays are used to evaluate whole genomic patterns of expression. The most important thing to know, the starting material is RNA, not DNA. Please remember this, as gene expression refers to mRNA. It consists of an array series of thousands of microscopic spots of DNA oligonucleotides called features, each containing picomoles of a specific DNA sequence known as pros. These can be a short section of a gene, oligonucleotide microarrays, or other DNA elements that are used to hybridize a copy DNA, a cDNA, or a cRNA, called target. Since an array can contain tens of thousands of probes, a microarray experiments may accomplish many genetic tests in parallel. It can be used to measure changes in expression levels, to detect single nucleotide polymorphism, or to genotype and resequence mutant genomes. This has been used to classify the few scars B-cell lymphoma into good and poor prognosis. Limitation is that it does not evaluate proteins, use proteomics for protein expression. <clears throat> and what are proteomics? The systemic study of the entire complement of proteins derived from a cell population. High density reagents are used to detect the presence of a specific protein. The peptides are separated by liquid chromatography then the same as ionized in a plate to mass spectrography. Take home with DNA microarrays, one studies gene expression, but these expressions do not necessarily translate to the protein formation. This is the take home to know. In proteomics, one studies the proteins that have actually been translated and have undergone the very important post translational modification. Pulling the strain reaction. Do you amplify DNA sequence from few to many? What is reverse transcriptase PCR? In RT-PCR, an mRNA strand, this is very important to know, an mRNA strand instead of DNA strand. Remember, once the introns are spliced out of RNA, then you have mRNA. mRNA strand is first transcribed into its DNA complement, called cDNA, using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. And then the resulting CNA is amplified using traditional or real-time PCR. So remember, this will not be the original DNA, it'll be the DNA with all the introns spliced out. <clears throat> Once CNA is made, then the DNA is denatured at high temperatures, 95 degrees Celsius, so that the two strands separate, and the primers can bind again at lower temperatures to begin a new chain reaction. The final step of PCR application is DNA extension from the primers. This is done with thermostable TAC DNA polymerase, usually at 70 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, the specificity of the assay is mainly determined by the primers, which may give a false positive result. Since it's so sensitive, it's easy to contaminate and important to prepare a negative control sample that does not include the template and use PCR primers that span a large intron. If RT-PCR is used to create cDNA from mRNA, this is very important to know, and the abnormality cannot be detected, it is because it was in the intron of the original DNA, which was not included in mRNA. That's a take home to know. <clears throat> Reverse transcriptase PCR is not to be confused with real-time PCR. Real-time PCR also called quantitative real-time PCR, 
is a laboratory technique used on a PCR which is used to amplify and simultaneously quantify the targeted DNA molecule. For one or more specific sequences in a DNA sample, real-time PCR enables both detection and quantification. The power lies in its ability to detect DNA from a single cell, but that is also its greatest weakness, the false positive rate. Gene therapies, transgenic mice. DNA is injected into a fertilized mouse oocyte, which is re-implanted into the mouse. Now the transgenic mouse will express the protein of the injected DNA gene. Knockout mice. Knocking out the activity of a gene provides information about what the gene normally does. Knockout mice are important animal models for studying the role of genes which have been sequenced but whose functions have not been determined. This approach involves modifying embryonic stem cells with a DNA construct containing DNA sequence homologous to the target gene. Embryonic stem cells that recombine with the genomic DNA are selected for and are injected into the mice blastocyst, a very young embryo, and implanted into the uterus. The newborn mice will not express the desired gene now and are called knockout mice. This method is used to manipulate a single gene in most cases, quote unquote, knocking out the gene so that the gene will not be expressed. For instance, P53 knockout mice develop many tumors. This is how leaf for many syndrome was discovered. Retroviruses. RNA tumor viruses or retroviruses copy RNA into DNA via reverse transcriptase and are used as a vector for gene transfer by incorporating into the host DNA. Potential board's question to know. Mother of a child with hemophilia B inquiring as to the advantages or disadvantages of gene therapy with retrovirus versus non-viral vector to insert gene in patients on fibroblasts. Retroviruses have a preferred insertion site in the genome that is within the oncogenes. This has resulted in the development of leukemia and two points with severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome who have had retrovirus therapy. On the other hand, gene therapy with a non-viral vector in patients on fibroblasts does not carry the risk of secondary malignancy, but possible that the transduced gene will not persist, so the function of the gene will decline over time. Induced pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotency refers to a stem cell that has the potential to differentiate into any of the three germ layers, endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. Using adult, not embryonic somatic cells, and reprogramming them by expression of certain transcription factors to become embryonic-like totipotent cell lines, which can then be tailored to any specific cell lineage. It alleviates concerns regarding the use of embryonic stem cell therapy since the patient's own fibroblasts are utilized. Test to diagnose somatic acquired mutations. Detection of minimal residual disease and lymphoma a PCR, the original tumor tissue is done, oligonucleotides unique to the patient are sequenced. This is called allele specific oligonucleotides. Detection of minimal residual disease in CML. Major molecular response to tyrosine kinase inhibitor is considered a free log reduction in BCR able transfers via PCR. Gene rearrangement studies in lymphoproliferative disease. TRB cell clonal cell lines undergo somatic mutations that produce distinct genetic patterns which then may be identified via PCR a certain body technique. This is why the pathologist requests B and T cell gene rearrangement studies to establish chronality of the suspicious appearing lymphocytes seen on the biopsy specimen. Test to diagnose germline inherited diseases. If the infected gene is known, just use PCR to amplify the locus, for instance sickle cell disease. If the affected gene has great heterogeneity, use RFLP to identify individuals within the family who have the disease and match it with patient in question, for instance, in hemophilia. This concludes the molecular background of hematology section. Thank you.